Hi there Wargamers, Austin here with Brush for Hire and today we're going to be painting a Pan Oceania Orc Trooper. This Orc model can be found in the Operation Ice Storm 2 player starter box as well as the current Pan Oceania starter box for the base faction. Our first order of business is going to be to prime the model black. I'm using Steinal Res Black Airbrush Primer. You could use a rattle can, there's nothing wrong with that. Putting on several thin coats, just making sure we cover all the model. Up next, we're going to be using the gray Steinal Res Primer, but you could use a gray paint if you prefer. And we're going to be just lightly coating the top. We're spraying it straight down and some from the sides and this is what we've got at this step. Next up we're going to use white. I'm also using the white Steinal Res Primer but just like with the gray you could use a white paint if you like. This is just going to intensify the highlights and show us where all the the bright areas on the model are going to be and all the dark parts. Next we're going to switch over to Lagoon Blue from Minotaur and we're going to thin this down. It's going to be really really thin so we want to take it very slow and we're going to coat all of the model with this and because we're doing it so thin you're going to still see all those dark areas through the translucent paint so you're gonna have very bright areas on top and very dark areas in the recess we're switching over to surf aqua now this is a reaper paint and we're going to carefully highlight all the areas that we want to be really bright and pop out over the series of steps that we're going to do next we're gonna really layer our highlighting where we'll put down a highlight and then we're going to kind of glaze over it and then we're going to put down another highlight so we really build up some really intensely bright highlights. We're going to hit the middles of the shoulder pads and the pecs and any of the other areas that we, we want to bring a lot of focus to. We're also going to try and keep in mind the areas that are going to be the, the brightest on the model from uh, an overhead light source. And we're just going to work our way down the model the top of the head there we go. now onto the armor on the legs we want to make sure to get the outsides of them more so than the insides we're going to leave the insides mostly alone just to keep those in as much of a shadow as we can we're kind of having to manufacture some of our contrast here but we want the dark areas and the light areas to be very different so that we don't end up with a very monotone model. We want to have a lot of contrast. You can tell I'm going really slowly on a lot of this because I've thinned the paint down significantly which means that uh, you need to go slow or else you're going to get lots of pooling and streaks. Next up we're going to use Ghost Tint Plasma Fluid and we're going to use a thinner medium from Vallejo those two mixed together we're gonna make our own sort of glaze here you could just use one of the ghost tents but it would be a little too intense and you would you would just cover up all of the hard work you've done so far so you can see here it's kind of brought all of those highlights down so we're going to use the surf aqua again and we're gonna essentially just put more highlights on all these areas and uh, we're gonna try to focus more towards the center so that essentially the previous time we did this um, we went a little wide and then brought the the tone back down with that glaze of the plasma fluid and uh, we're gonna do a little bit more focus this time so that it's a smaller brighter area in the middle and now we're gonna switch back to our ghost tint plasma fluid glaze again and we're gonna bring those highlights down one more time there we go brought that tone down a little bit more and we've got brighter highlights than the previous time now we're gonna go back to highlighting but this time we're going to use snow white instead of our surf aqua this is going to be our final highlight pass and we're gonna aim for the smallest brightest areas that we want on the model these are really gonna be the areas that we want to, to be areas of focus. We want to make one part of each of the pieces of armor really, really, really pop. 
It's going to look pretty extreme right now with the white on top of everything, but we're going to switch back to our glaze again, and we're going to bring it all down one last time. This will really tie everything together. It'll give the white areas that we just painted that same blue tinge. You can see that we're really starting to build up a lot of contrast. That is most of what we're going to do for the armor there. So up next we're going to switch over to Ash Gray. This is one of the high density pigment paints from Reaper. And we're going to coat all of the areas in between the armor. The Orc Trooper has a whole bunch of hoses and some kind of like carbon fiber kind of looking things on his legs in between the armor. And we're also going to put this on some of the armor panels just to try and give it a little bit of, of difference. So it's not all just one giant suit of blue armor. Do the panels on the backs and the fronts of the legs. And you can see I'm not getting all the way out to the edges, like right down into the crevices, uh, because the wash that we're going to put on everything in just a minute is going to help sort of uh, hide our crimes here. So we've got all the gray down now, and you can see the areas that I chose to, to put down. Um, and it's not all exactly the cleanest, but once we put the Nuln Oil down on top of this, uh, that'll really help define the edges of it. And because the model is so crisp and clean as far as the sculpt goes, it'll really help make straight even lines right around the edges. There's lots of amazing detail in this model, so there's lots of places for this wash to get down into and just make tons of fast detail for you without you having to try uh, particularly hard to, to make it happen. Now, I'm washing the armor, but I'm being very careful to only put a little tiny bit of it in between the panel lines. This is going to give us that uh, oil washed look without waiting days for it to dry. When you do this, you'll probably want to thin your wash down uh, significantly, or you can cut it with a thinner medium if you're concerned about it uh, pooling or running all over the place. This is going to help separate out a lot of the armor panels. Because while our shading is really nice, we want, uh, we want all the definition we can get out of this. Put a little bit down in each one of these little vent grills. And you can see me wiping away the, the excess. I, I tend to get a little bit on the surface, but uh, it's easy to, to wipe away the excess. So now here we are. We're looking, we're looking pretty good. But now it is time to uh, worry about some of the other parts. We've got the armor just about done, so we're going to black out the gun and the hands. And we can get away with it. Making the hands and the weapons they're holding the same color is a great time-saving technique, as long as it doesn't look silly. It just means that you don't have to pick out fingers around a, uh, a gun grip. Next we're going to do a little bit of dry brushing. We're going to go back to our ash gray and we're going to do some really fine light dry brushing here. We don't want to overdo it. We just want to, to give a little bit of, of detail on the, the gun. And you can also dry brush some of the gray parts uh, as, you, as you see need for it on your model. Up next, we're going to be doing some edge highlighting. So I'm going to use Skull White and the Dry Retarder from uh, Minotaur. You only need just a little bit of the Dry Retarder to, to make it work. The reason I like to add a little bit when I'm doing edge highlighting is because I need the paint to stay wet longer on my brush. You'll find that if you do a lot of very fine edge highlighting, you'll dry out the tip of your brush really quickly and you're constantly picking off a little ball of dried paint that's blocking you from actually using the, the fine point of your brush to, to accomplish uh, this detail work. So I'm just lining a lot of the, the panels on the armor. I'm kind of picking a direction. It doesn't necessarily have to be the top edge. Sometimes while that would make sense, it doesn't look the best. I'm trying to pick an edge that's going to give us the, the most interesting definition. So um, picking one next to a dark area is nice because then you get that really stark separation uh, between dark areas and light areas on your model. 
and where possible, uh, try to use the side of your brush instead of the tip. It's harder to control the tip when you're um, when you are trying to to make such a fine line. So uh, when you can use the side, you can kind of uh, just have it ride down the the edge of uh, whatever part of the model you're working on. Some places like flat panels, you're going to have a hard time using the side just because then you wipe the side of the brush all over other parts of the model. Uh, but where where you can, it certainly makes it a lot easier. Just getting the little divots on the helmet. Really separate those dark wash areas from the light blue areas. Now, I do like to get under the eye sockets in these helmets. It really helps make the eyes stand out in the face. They're so small, and if you can edge highlight the area right under them, it really adds a lot of depth very quickly. Now we're gonna continue on doing edge highlighting, but this time we're going to mix some of the ash gray in with our skull white and driver tartar uh, concoction. We just don't want to use straight white on the gray parts because it's, that would be just a little bit too, too contrasting. We want it to, to make the model pop and not um, be so stark that it's, it's jarring. So next we're going to use some angelic blood and we're going to put the eye lenses in. I'm not going to lie, this is a tricky part. Eyes are always just about the hardest part of doing any model. My best recommendation is just to be patient. You can see how long I'm taking on just one of the four eye holes on this thing. If you're having trouble getting the paint to stick while only having a little bit on your brush, you might want to add some dry retarder. A thinner paint always sticks to a thicker paint. You don't get much thicker than dry. We're also going to put a little bit of that same red on the optics on the rifle. And bam, we are done. All that we've got left to do now is do some basing. We hope that you enjoyed this painting tutorial on the Pan Oceania Orc Trooper. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe if you aren't subscribed already, and leave us a comment about things that you'd like to see us paint in the future. Click the link in the description to get a painting quote, and until next time, as always, happy wargaming.